Hey guys, Bingo Cat here, and today we will be looking at an old CRT TV. Manufactured in November 2000, this specific CRT TV is a Symphonic SC309A. If you've never heard of Symphonic, then I don't blame you. Symphonic was actually a brand name used by the Japanese based electronics company Funi Corporation for TVs, but the brand name doesn't seem to be in use as of today. This particular unit has a black body made out of hard plastic with the screen being made of glass. The build quality of this TV has aged fairly well, with it basically having no damage to the body. This TV has a 9-inch 4x3 screen and a built-in VCR. Regarding this particular TV, my family purchased this TV in late 2000 when my sister and I were really little. The intent with this TV was to set this up in the back of my mom's car by strapping it to the center console. My parents wanted to do this because we used to live out in the Colorado mountains, and a lot of the times when we had to go places, it was at least a 30 minute drive to get there. So to keep my sister and I entertained on these long trips, my parents set up this TV for my sister and I to watch. We used this TV frequently on long road trips up until 2006, when we purchased a portable DVD player to use instead. As far as buttons go, on the front of the TV, you will see the power button, VCR control buttons, and volume control buttons. As far as ports go, you will see an RCA port for video and audio input, which the TV refers to as an aux input. And you will also see a 3.5mm headphone jack for audio output, which is something you don't exactly find in all modern electronics anymore. On the back, we have an input for power, as well as an antenna input. On the top of the TV is a hole for a TV antenna, but unfortunately, I don't have an antenna to use with this TV. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the original remote for this TV. Luckily, my family stalled an old universal remote from the 90s around, which I paired successfully with the TV. Unfortunately, the remote didn't do anything that the buttons on the TV couldn't already do, which was really disappointing to me as I was hoping there would be a button on the remote to allow me to view the TV settings. Now originally, I thought my family didn't have any VHS tapes anymore, but luckily I managed to find a tape that I had no idea even existed in our living room cupboard. As I popped the tape in and started playing it, I realized that this tape contained shows that my mom recorded for my sister and I when we were really little. On screen, you are seeing footage of the children's show Blue's Clues, which aired on Nick Jr. in the 1990s and 2000s. Do you think this bag of sugar feels heavy or light? Heavy! You think? Let's see. Oh, damn. See, the sugar is kind of hard to lift up. It must be heavy. Good way. Once again, I had no idea that we still had any VHS tapes like this, so it was pretty cool seeing what my sister and I watched when we were little. The quality of the video was rather poor, but given that I'm using a 17 year old VHS tape, it's definitely understandable. The VHS tape seemed to produce several noticeable artifacts on the screen, which distracted from the viewing experience of this show. Unfortunately, my camera didn't seem to like this TV too much, as no matter what position I put my camera in, I seemed to have noticeable problems with getting the image to display correctly on my camera. Flipping through the TV channels, and you'll see that there are channels for both TV stations and the TV's aux input. Even if I did have an antenna to use with this TV, this TV only accepts analog antenna signals. So in order to watch modern antenna TV, I would have to buy a digital TV converter box, as the US ended broadcast of analog TV signals in June 2009. Regarding the aux input, I wanted to try hooking up my laptop to this TV, but since my laptop doesn't have an RCA output on it, I had to buy an HDMI to RCA adapter off of Amazon. The adapter was relatively inexpensive, coming in at around $10. Once I got the adapter hooked up, I was able to use the TV as a display for my laptop. 
The screen defaulted to a resolution of 1280 by 720, which is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. I decided to leave the resolution at 1280 by 720 though, as when I set the resolution to one that had a 4x3 aspect ratio, for some reason it resulted in black bars on the sides of the screen. Navigating the operating system was definitely a challenge, as the text on the TV was barely readable. YouTube videos on the TV looked acceptable, and was definitely an improvement from the VHS tapes I had playing earlier. I decided to also test gaming on this TV. My game of choice for this video was GTA 5. With the game fully loaded, it was hard to read any of the on-screen menu items, but the game environment looked just fine. While the screen definitely wasn't the sharpest looking screen I played GTA 5 on, one thing I liked about the game on a CRT was I felt like the environment was displayed at a greater depth than it would be on an LCD panel. What I mean by this is that with the CRT, I felt like I was looking at the game through a window, which is something I don't really experience with LCD panels. While I wasn't able to find out what the refresh rate of this TV was, it was definitely acceptable as I felt no input lag at all while in the game. However, since it is a CRT TV, the CRT did produce a noticeable flicker, which is not pleasing to the eye at all. To sum it all up, most electronic companies aren't manufacturing CRT displays anymore, and if you walk into any modern electronic store, you won't find any CRTs for sale. Were CRTs really that bad though? The thing that impressed me about this TV was mainly the perception of the depth of the environment when I played GTA, which is something that isn't as good on LCD displays. For most people, perhaps the biggest disadvantage to CRTs though are their size and weight, as bigger and heavier CRTs are not fun to set up or keep around, and is one of the main reasons why people have switched over to flat screen panels. With the screen of this particular TV being so small though, this wasn't really an issue for me. The thing that killed this particular TV for me though, was that the display seemed to strain my eyes compared to LCD displays, as even staring at the screen for a few minutes made me want to rest my eyes due to the flickering of the TV. While this particular CRT is not for me, higher quality CRT displays are still usable today, and if you still have a CRT display, Chances are there's still a lot of life left in it. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And please check out my Twitter, Instagram, and Discord linked down below in the video description. As always, I thank you guys for watching. Goodbye.